We're here at the Penang Peranakan Mansion, and this is Lillian, who is the museum director of this place. Welcome. Nice to meet you. And she's going to tell us some wonderful facts and interesting things about the place. Here in Penang, at this mansion, we are having re we have recreated this place to look like a Peranakan mansion. Okay. And uh, well, the Peranakans first came from China. The men from China during probably during the time of Admiral Tsung He, Ming. Dynasty. Okay. And so when they sailed here, there were no Chinese girls and they married and settled down with Thai, Burmese, mm. Indonesians and Malay girls. Ah, okay. And so that is why our ladies dress like this because our earliest mothers were not Chinese. Right. They were the okay. local ladies. We are Penang, Straits Chinese, okay. Baba Nonyas. Okay. So we are different because we have moved north and being in the north, we are more than closer to Thailand, so our styles of headdress and yes. sangles and dressing will be more influenced by Thailand. Oh, right, okay. And also because there were probably more Thai girls marrying with the Chinese. Oh, family. okay. And also our language. The Malaccan and Singapore Baba Nonyas, they speak in Malay. Mm. And some may not even understand Chinese, but because we're in Penang, more Hokkien stronghold. So we speak Hokkien with a sprinkling of Malay. Uh, so Lillian, tell us more about this place and who it was built by, why it was built. Okay, this place has an interesting history. The owner, the original owner of this place is Kapitan China, okay. Chen Keng Kui. And he was made Kapitan China by the British mm. because he was the head of the Hai San Secret Society. A secret society? Yeah, and so I probably the Chinese all behave themselves under him. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> they behave themselves, why? Because... <laughs> because... <laughs> through rule of force. <laughs> then, uh, 1894, he built this place. Mm. And, uh, well, he died about 1901, 02. And then, because he was here, probably during his retirement years, he had the, you know, he had all these engineers come in and bringing in uh, Minton towels from Stoke on Trent, European lamps, waterford crystals, and all these Chinese uh, carvings and screen doors. So, everything here you see, you know, uh, all the European and Chinese culture is mixed here. Yeah, because, also typically of the Baba Nonyas, because uh, he was Chinaman, yeah. merchant class, and also having the wealth to, to import all this yes, indeed, yeah. during the time of the British while well, they were here. It's amazing, there's this ironwork as well here. Yeah. Oh good, yeah, there's Scottish ironworks all yeah, around. It doesn't look Chinese yeah. or anything. And, and if you see these pillars that come down, it actually has a, uh, it's embossed and it says McFarlane Glasgow. So imagine the, the engineers that built this, they had uh, English, they had Scottish, they had Chinese, they wow. had Dutch lamps. You know, this house is all... One world. <laughs> I feel in this room we should speak more politely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a more European room, done up probably to impress his guests, mm. with swing curtains, Victorian mirrors, Italian marble, Johnson Brothers plates, oh, wow, okay. and uh, willow designs on our teacups. Very nice. And even in the midst of all these European elements, there is this beautiful Chinese um, windows. Oh, you can see the reflection here. And they are mixed uh, European stained glass mm. matched with Chinese etched glass. And they look wonderful together. Yes, so and that's very right, really typical nice. of Baba Nonya, where we just match uh, European, English and Chinese things. So this is the opium bed with the opium pipes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, mother of Pearl. And also this beautiful Mother of Pearl set, which is of very high quality and of the highest price too. So this set will probably belong to someone very wealthy, rich, prominent. I notice on the carvings on the chairs, is that, are those bats? Yes, and Capitan China is the original Batman, and this <laughs> is Gotham. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, the reason for bats is that Chinese, uh, the word bat rhymes with <clears throat> pinfolk rhymes with good fortune. So they believe that if they have got pictures or carvings or images of bats, then you have good fortune vibes coming ah, in. Okay. okay. Here a high threshold because Kapitan China is a very important personality. So the higher the threshold for Chinese, the more important the man. 
So from the road, you can know that an important man lives here. Mm. But of course, he's Capitan China, Mandarin. And secondly, that is to block all his good luck since he's so successful from flowing out. <laughs> and since others are not as successful as him. He wants to keep it all for himself. <laughs> yeah, that's to keep the bad, their bad luck from coming in. And these two Tang Dynasty generals who are door gods to protect uh, this place from any malicious spirits that might enter. Mm. They won't be able to. And then, remember I told you about the bats? Well, up there, we have got all these bats. Yeah, I heard and... it squeaking, you guys. <laughs> it didn't sound like normal birds. <laughs> so these bats are um, good fortune and they're living good fortune. And today, if they poo and pee in your head, it's good luck. Yeah, I'll just tell you, it's your lucky day. <laughs>